Clinton City Council will please come to order. We'll begin tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Gans. Here. Seeley. Here. McGraw. Here. Detterman. Here. O'Neill. Here. Connell. Here. Thank you. Councilmember Detterman. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to dispense with the reading of the regular city council meeting and committee of the whole minutes of November 8th, 2016, and they be approved as published November 22nd, 2016. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Connell? Yes. Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Thank you. We have two public hearings tonight. I will convene a public hearing concerning the vacation and conveyance of an alley right of way adjacent to 600 South 4th Street. Have we heard anything in the clerk's office? We have not, Your Honor. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address this public hearing? Hearing none, Councilmember Gaston. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the public hearing concerning the vacation and conveyance of an alley right of way adjacent to 600 South 4th Street be entered into the record. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Gassman. Your Honor, I have an ordinance for the first consideration. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. Thank you. An ordinance providing for the vacation and conveyance of a 20 foot by 140 foot alley right away adjacent to 600 South 4th Street for $1. Thank you. I will now convene a public hearing concerning the sale of property at 1456 South Bluff Boulevard. Have we heard anything in the clerk's office? We have not, Your Honor. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address this public hearing? Hearing none, Councilmember McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the public hearing concerning the sale of property at 1456 South Bluff Boulevard be entered into the record. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Could you roll call, please? Councilmember O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember McGraw. I move that the resolution. I have a resolution approving the sale of 1456 South Boulevard. I move that the resolution be adopted as presented. It was too short. We need one more. Yeah, second. <laughs> <laughs> no. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Did we have a roll call, please? Councilmember O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gasman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. Thank you. That concludes our public hearings for tonight. We'll move to audience comment. We do have one person that wishes to address the council. Uh, it's Dr. Mark Schrader. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Mark Schrader, 200 Whispering Pines. I'm chair of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the resolution providing an agreement with Greenplay to develop a Parks and Recreation Master Plan. And uh, I appreciate the fact that there were considerations going into this fiscal year of the need to budget for this plan, and we have done our due diligence in looking at the vendors and the propo proposals and we feel that Greenplay is an excellent vendor to kind of take us to that next step. Many of you were involved in the Vision Iowa project a few years ago, and one of the things we heard loud and clear from that process was well, there's more work to do. And the reason we're so excited and, and feel it's important is we want families to live and work here, but more importantly, we want them to use Clinton as a place, as a destination for when they make choices we don't always have the people that um, come to Clinton to live. They may have a job in the Quad Cities. We want them in Clinton. Uh, we had a couple in our neighborhood 
that worked in Rock Island, they went on the website and they opted to live in Clinton, bought a home in Clinton, had kids in the school system, and in the kind of economic development <coughs> theater, one of the buzzwords we hear is quality of place. We have to have things for millennials to do, we have to have things for senior citizens to do, and we have to make sure that we have the right attractions that people expect in communities. One of the things that Bettendorf uh, rolled out over the winter was they realized that we have a tendency up here to shut down during the winter. And we want to take a look with this planning element is what can we have for families and kids <coughs> and people to do in the winter so we don't have to shut our park systems down. The other thing we kind of want to do is create some wow things that people will say, wow, that's really cool and I want to come to Clinton and I want to consider that even though I may work in the Quad <coughs> Cities, I want to buy a house and raise my family in Clinton. And that's the economic bang that we're trying to get from this. The second part of it is, in order to apply for some of the state funding that is out there, we have to have conceptual drawings and things on the shelf that we can feed into these grants. There's a, the state of Iowa puts out a map of all the 99 counties and they put dots on the counties of people that have received Vision Iowa grants, CAT grants, and other programs. If you look across the state, there are some counties that are almost black with dots they have got drawings, they have got grant things ready to go, mm -hmm. and they're getting to the trough and getting these funds. I understand budgets are tight and there's always choices to make, but the longer we delay something like this, the longer we're kind of putting things off that people expect. Some of the things we're talking about is maybe a plaza area where there would be a concrete area and there'd be a spray ground in the summer, and then in the winter it would convert to ice and we would have ice skating things like that, just things that people expect in communities. The Quad Cities has several, and we're competing for not only the jobs, but we're co competing for people to want to live here. So uh, we've been patiently waiting in line, and we feel like we got to the front of the line here for this project, and we feel that it's an important economic development tool that the longer we hold off or delay something like this, we're gonna be behind when it comes to securing funding. Many of these things carry a fairly significant price tag, but we can broker grants and things that can help cushion that cost, and we're not expecting to come to the council to fund the projects. We just need a blueprint going forward so that when we go to Des Moines and ask for funds, we have our act together just like other communities do in terms of conceptual drawings, well thought out projects. Part of the piece that Greenplay does is listen to the community, and that's in the Vision Iowa project, we probably had 200 people that provided input, and then we broke that into several subcommittees, and at the end of the day, we developed not only what the community wanted, but what was, what was it gonna take to get people to live in our area and want to come here. So I've been talking a lot tonight, I'm certainly open to questions, and I understand there's concerns <laughs> about funding and budgets and things like that, but I think there's a price to pay if we wait because we'll be a whole year behind in some of these grants that were rolled out last time. If we don't get to them, then we're, we're not gonna be able to fund some of these projects. And some of these, in my opinion, are worth committing the resources and time to because we have kids and grandparents and millennials that, that all are expecting certain amenities in a community. We have some of them, but we're, we have some gaps, particularly in some of the winter activities. So. In the interest of time, I'm gonna see if you have any questions or comments. Since this is an item on the agenda, we can have some questions if you have anything for Mark. Hearing, unfortunately, I don't think we have any questions. Well, that's I great. do have one real, oh, just okay. real quick. Um, <coughs> how long is the proposal uh, good for that's, that's out there that you're proposing to accept, do you know? My understanding was that, that sometime before the end of this calendar year they would they would like the commitment because it's probably an eight month process for them to do their work the current timeline calls for beginning early december and finishing july we obviously got a little bit behind with the transition and things like that but we feel that in actually they're partnering with a group called smith jjr out of madison which a couple of those principals were involved in the vision iowa project so they they're familiar with clinton so Probably seven months, eight months. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was $30,000 uh, budgeted 
and I believe the other 25,000 or roughly is going to come from excess money left in the doc fund. Is that Wasn't there correct? A, yes. Correct. Yeah. Didn't you have a grant that you were able to well, pair what with we, that? Um, that? That is correct. There was 30 and then 24. And then there was a thought if there was some additional community input or surveying or some conceptual drawings that need to be done, the Friends of Riverview Park has some funds available that could be added on to to there, there's some options in the RFP that we could fund in addition to what the city had budgeted this fiscal year. So I think the proposal was 54 something and there was 55 set aside for this project. Well, not really. 30 was set aside, yeah. but there was 25 available correct. in the in the dock fund. 25 was set aside in the general fund, correct? Um, 30, I believe. Well, it's called, the, it was left 30. 30, yeah. 30 from 30. 30 was set aside and then in the dock fund from dock fund from the sale of the dock, there still was 25 unallocated dollars left in that one. So that, that that's how the plan was to pay for it. That was the communication that was received yeah, to that, our. That's our the, that's the only one I've I've seen too. So that that was what the intent was. If you were asking for a funding source, that's it. So. Any other questions for Dr. Schrader? Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council tonight? Hearing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. Council Member Detterman. Thank you, Your Honor. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented on the attachment. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? We'd like to pull one. Okay, yeah. Number one. Number one? Yep. Number one. Sorry. Number one. Yeah, what do you think you to pull one? Pull one. <laughs> <laughs> pull one and be at number one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Okay, could we have uh, a roll call vote on the balance of the consent agenda, please? Council Member Connell? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to motions, resolutions, and ordinances. Council Member Connell. Thank you, Your Honor. I have an ordinance um, to be read for the second and third consideration. Well, we'll do the second first. An ordinance providing no, no, that no, 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 we have to have a second now. Okay. I know you're eager to really read that long one, but we have to have a second. <laughs> and is there any discussion? Could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Seeley. Deep breath. <laughs> yes. McGraw. Yes. Detterman. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Connell. Yes. Gasman. Yes. Thank you. Now you can read that long. Thank one. you. An ordinance providing that general property taxes levied, property taxes levied and collected each year on all property located within the. Washington, Washington Middle School District, uh, Urban Renewal Area, and the City of Clinton, County of Clinton, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Clinton, uh, County of Clinton, Clinton Community School District, and other taxing districts be paid to a special fund for a payment of principal and interest on loans, monies advanced to and indebtedness, including bonds issued for, excuse me, issued or to be issued, incurred by the city in connection with the Washington Middle School Urban Renewal Area, the Washington Middle School Urban Renewal Plan. Uh, I move that the rules be suspended and the council consider an ordinance for the third time. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Could we have a roll call, please? Council Member Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Thank you. An ordinance providing that general property taxes levied and collected each year on all property located within the Washington, Washington Middle School Urban Renewal Area in the City of Clinton, County of Clinton, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Clinton, County of Clinton, Clinton Community School District, and other taxing <coughs> districts be paid to a special fund for payment of principals and interest on loans, monies advanced to, to and indebtedness including bonds issued or to be issued, incurred by the city in connection with the Washington Middle School Urban Renewal Area, the Washington Middle School Urban Renewal Plan. I move the rules be suspended and the ordinance under consideration be placed on its final passage and adopted. We have a motion and a second. Is there any final discussion? Could we have roll call, please? Council Member Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Seeley. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the council consider an ordinance for the second time. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
Could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. McConnell? Yes. Gasman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Thank you. An ordinance providing that general property tax is levied and collected each year on area in the city of Clinton, County of Clinton, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Clinton, County of Clinton, community, Clinton Community School District, and other taxing districts be paid to a special fund for payment of principal and interest on loans, monies advance, and to and indebtedness, including bonds issued and or to to be issued incurred by the city in connection with the Saddle Ridge Urban Renewal Area, the Saddle Ridge Urban Renewal Plan. Hmm. I move the rules be suspended and the ordinance be considered for a third time. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I'll just have one comment. The word principal is misspelled in the ordinance. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not good. No, not good. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the final draft things will, things will get fixed. Um, so could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gasman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. An ordinance providing that general property taxes levied and collected each year on all property <coughs> located within the Saddle Ridge Urban Renewal Area in the City of Clinton, County of Clinton, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Clinton, County of Clinton, Clinton Community School District, and other taxing districts be paid to a special fund for payment of principal and interest on loans, monies advanced, and indebtedness, including bonds issued or to be issued incurred by the city in connection with the Saddle Ridge Urban Renewal Area, the Saddle Ridge Urban Renewal Plan. I move the rules be suspended and the ordinance under consideration be placed on its final passage and adopted. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any final discussion? Hearing none, could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gasman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Gasman. <coughs> Thank you, Honor. I have a resolution accepting bids and awarding contract for the Clinton Fire Department fire sprinkler and alarm project. Move this be adopted as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember O'Neill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, when we got this, I, I guess I was under the impression we were you know, I'm going to get these bids when they came in, so we we really didn't, but that's, that's okay. Um, I did get a <coughs> breakdown from, from Pat, I did advise uh, some of the council people that this would be at their seat when they came in. Um, I, looking at this, um, when you break this out, I think, you know, they, they have recommendations is fine, but, you know, the, I, I don't know if we really need to express that you know, it's been vetted by the city attorney, but the, the, the final decision, of course, is, is the council's. And one of the things I, 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 I'd like to suggest is that we take this and, and do break it out and the way, um, I guess, we intended when we talked about this back a couple <coughs> months ago when we discussed how we get bids and, and what we do with them when we get them. The, the difference between electronics uh, bids for the alarm system is only $65 different than Continental's total bid for the alarm system. So I would suggest, and uh, I'll put in a motion in a minute, that the, the bid for the alarm system go to electronics um, at, a, at a total of 109700 uh, I'm sorry. Uh, their total is 18884 which is $65 different than the alarm system bid by Continental. The reason I'm, I'm asking that, one, we have we do have a provision to, there could be a 5% variance for local contractors. Electronic most certainly is a, a local contractor. And, uh, you know, I think every time we look at something when a business either leaves or goes, goes out of business, is it because there's not enough local support for it? So with the idea that there's only $65 difference between the two bids of 18,084 <coughs> and 18,816, I'd like to 
suggest we even move that the bid for the alarm system be awarded to electronics and the remainder of the contract for the fire suppression uh, go to Continental because they are the lower bidder on, on the two uh, bids for the fire for the um, fire suppression for the sprinkler. So my motion be that the bid be awarded to Continental for the sprinkler system at one hundred and eight thousand one hundred and forty three dollars and that the, uh, the uh, contract for the alarm system go to electronic the local vendor at eighteen thousand eight hundred and four dollars. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second so we'll open up discussion. <coughs> Mike, were you part of this bid opening? I, I have two questions before we get too far into the conversation. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mike Brown, Fire Chief. Yes. In, in the Continental <laughs> Fire Sprinkler bid, I'm seeing a breakdown of alarm and sprinkler, but when I see the end, they're putting a total. Are, are they even willing to do the, sp the sprinkler if they don't sell the alarm, or did they package this as a price and just happen to break it out as the two items? Or, or how was the bid asked to be done? I, I do not know what they're, you know, if they're willing to do one half of it or, or the other. I don't know that. Uh, I think it's only fair. I, I understand what uh, Councilman O'Neill is saying, the local contractor. Fair to, to make sure that the public and the council knows that Bill Waters, who bid the job from Continental, is also a Clinton resident um, as well. So I don't, because we're talking local contractors well, and local it, business it, people. It, yeah, I guess that's why. Um, I've worked with, with all of the vendors for, for over 20 years, so I don't have a problem with, with with whoever you choose um i just in my the way i was taught to do it the low bid is the who gets it well i vetted it through the city attorney um his recommendation to me was that we just do the one if you want to choose a different one i'm fine well, with that the, the reason why i ask is i didn't know if they would actually honor their bid if they didn't do the whole i don't know that, yeah, that kind of a package you, price you, you, uh, yeah to, i i didn't think that would come up but I'm just kind of feeling it, Mike. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that the, the difference between the two bids for the for the sprinkler system is only fifteen hundred dollars. So if they don't, then the other one would still would still okay. be the next bid. Well, well I mean, why don't you make uh, the motion that if they don't want to uh, split it, we'll award the bid uh, the, the next price, the next price, the price, the price, next responsible price. bidder, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said. Either, either of the contractors yeah. works for me. I, I really don't care. I just, I'll do a great I job. I just wanted to bring that up. Sometimes you never know how they might put something together. At a price. But I did have one other question, though, just because, because electronics did spell out, and they were very thorough in their proposal, that it was a $40 a month monitoring fee per location. Continental didn't say anything. We didn't ask for, the, for a, a price on the monitoring fee. So we don't know what theirs is. Theirs could be higher. They're, they're all they're thirty to forty dollars okay. a month. Well, I just wanted. To, I was uh, just trying to make sure we compare all the apples to an apple. Is all quite also. honestly, electronics. Uh, they they did the alarm system at Chansey. Okay. Um, we used them actually. They helped us put the specs together. <laughs> um, they were very helpful that way. Um, so they'll do a fine job either way. Well, I, I realize that. I was just. Well, just trying to, I'm just, I was reading apples to apples. Yeah, and, and, and in that comparison also, Continental <laughs> included two years uh, of free maintenance, inspection, and testing, which is very expensive. Um, that wasn't asked to be included. They did include that in their bid. So that's about 800 bucks probably. Okay. I think one of the only concerns I, I had was as long as the city attorney was okay with um, it being federal money, FEMA money, and we're not really dipping into our pockets on this, that there was a 10% match. I think it was a 90% grant and a 10% match, possibly. Yeah. Um, we have the right, obviously, if it's our own money, um, for a 5%, I think, vari variance you know, to local contractors. Well, as long as we don't get in trouble with any FEMA money that we're, we've been obligated, then I think it yeah, would make sense to do, and I don't... I don't know at this time, it, the city attorney told me he didn't okay. think that was an issue. So I hadn't had a t chance to talk to him about that. We talked about a lot of other things today, but I, we don't want to get in trouble with FEMA. Right. Okay. As long as he's good. Okay. okay. Pat, you're there, aren't you? Pat? Yes, I'm here. Forgot about you. I don't see a big issue with that, and I, I seriously doubt they're going to have any issue as long as we're following our local protocols for distribution of the contract. 
you know, we're so close on the price here that I think the city has a prerogative to prefer uh, its own policy and consider its own policy if it wants to prefer a local contractor or if it thinks there's some equity in splitting the contract in order to distribute, the, you know, the work to different firms. I think you have the prerogative to do that. I'm not at all concerned about, about it just because of the small difference in price. So I think you're just, you're talking about a practical issue here. Okay. It's a, and I think it's a council judgment call on how to go about it and uh, everything that's been proposed, any of those options might work. I think it's a council decision. Okay. Okay. Do you prefer that amend the motion? Uh, to. No, it will be automatically, you'll, you'll, you'll just Next responsive. <coughs> yeah. Amend the motion that if Continental does not accept the, the work if yeah. Continental does not accept the work on the sprinkler system because it's, they didn't get the alarm, then we'll automatically give it to Tri-State. Tri-State. I think that would be a way. And we won't have to come back. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, it would have to come back. And we'd, have to, we'd be having an meeting. <coughs> okay. I will amend my motion to uh, include that if Continental is not comfortable doing just the sprinkler work, that the next lowest bidder would be Tri-State sprinkler, or that contract would be awarded to them in the amount of one hundred nine thousand seven hundred dollars. Second. Second that. You got all that, Pat? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Any other questions or <coughs> discussion about this? Hearing none, could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Gassman? Yes. Seely? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a resolution setting the public hearing regarding proposed capital improvement program for FY 2018 through 2023 for the City of Clinton. I move that the res a resolution be adopted as presented. Mm -hmm. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? And when is the public hearing? What, what would, when would the public hearing be, Pat? I believe it would be set for the 13th of December. Okay. Mm -hmm. 13th of December. December 13th. It would be our first council meeting in December. Okay. Any other discussion? Could we have a roll call, please, then? Councilmember O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. Thank you. Councilmember O'Neill. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a resolution approving an agreement with Greenplay LLC for the development of a parks master plan. I move this resolution be adopted as presented. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing that? Uh, I'll make a couple comments. Okay. Well, I'm very for this plan. I think it's integral and, and very important. In light of our most recent finance discussion, I'm concerned with starting this until we know a little bit more. I understand waiting doesn't exactly solve any issues, but I think we sometimes need to be sure we address needs before wants, and I think this is very important. I'm not saying it should go away, but my personal perspective is, is that we need to possibly address some of the issues that are looming with us, and in a month or two, we're gonna know a lot, uh, know a lot more, and I think we'll be able to make a lot better decision on this. My concern would be that at our recent budget talks, we were discussing getting rid of parks employees and replacing them with part-time employees, and we're going to have this plan and possibly no people to even maintain what we have. So um, just those kinds of concerns. So I think we'll know a lot more in a couple months, and we'll also have, a, hopefully, a city administrator that can also uh, be involved with starting this process and give input. So that's my personal two cents on it. So, anyone else? Yeah. Councilmember O'Neill. Well, I, 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 I guess I understand the, the, the stand of the Councilman Seely and, and even and even others. But you know. If we're going to live under the shadow of a PAB agreement or a PAB uh, filing by ADM, I, you know, you're almost to the point where why don't we just pack up until they make a decision, we'll come back and, and do it then. You know, I, the people here 
were put here for a reason because the public feels that they have the best judgment to, to move forward and keep the city moving forward. And, and again, this has been a lot of people put a lot of time in this. Um, I know probably at least 90% of the people that were involved in it. And, you know, they took time out from their job. They, they met and they, they did it. It's, uh, there's a lot of compromise on, on uh, uh, getting green play uh, in, on, in on the picture. Um, they apparently have the best deal going because we even went past and above uh, that it's not, it's not the, the least amount, but it's the best deal for, for the, uh, uh, for the park, parks master plan. So uh, again, I, I, th I think we, we have this uh, scheduled in the budget and that if we going to live in fear over one thing sitting on the agenda till hell freezes over, I guess I, you know, there's no sense in even getting up and skipping Wheel of Fortune to come here because we're not going to make any decisions. So, you know, quite frankly, I, I'm just, uh, I'm not ready to roll the dice and be, and be uh, moronic about it, but I'm not going to stop dead in my tracks either. So I, I'm going to urge this, the city council to pass and move this forward. And uh, you know we we got to do business as usual, and, and uh, I think the outcome will, will work out the will work out the details. So that's uh, I, I just don't think we can just stop making decisions and moving things forward. And this has been a long time coming, and I would hate to <coughs> brush it off for the people that put all the time and effort into it. Anyone else? I I, I, <laughs> I would just like to hear your input because I know I. When I first came on, this was kind of a, a champion of yours, and it was right at the budget process because when I kind of heard about it. So I, I don't know. I just kind of hear your take on it. I know it's something that you've been working on. So yeah, um, yeah. This was one of the my issues. Uh, you know, we we did such a great job with Riverfront and that, and then when Rotary got involved with Eagle Point Lodge, even before that, you know, I, I seen where the town needed a master plan. So you know, I pushed for that and. Actually, real proud. You know, we we got it in the budget, and we're working on it. I uh, agree to some degree with Councilman Seely too, the with the PAB and stuff. But uh, I think um, I think we just need to go ahead and do with it. The monies are two different things again. You know, we can't uh, the way the state handicaps us. You know, we can't use money over here for over there, and so it, it's different money. So I'm I'm all for it. I think we need to go ahead with it. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll give a point of clarification here. I am not stopping dead in my tracks, as <laughs> it, it's been dis is stated. I, we do have to make decisions, and I think one of the most important decisions that council member can make while we're sitting up here is remember that the money we're spending is not our money, and our job is to be good stewards of that money. I am concerned. I do feel just as passionately about this plan as council member O'Neill. However, I think when push comes to shove and if things don't plan out as, uh, as we're hoping in a couple months, this plan may turn out to be nothing we will even be able to implement for five years and that's what concerns me. $55,000 is not a small amount of money and no, it's not a deal breaker for the city but it is a relatively significant amount and simply waiting <coughs> two months so we know where we're at before moving this forward, I did not feel was a bad decision by any means. So, and I do appreciate everyone's time and commitment that has worked on this plan because it is important and our parks are very important to growing our community. I couldn't agree more, so. Anybody else? Hearing nothing else, could we have roll call please? Council Member Gassman? Yes. Seeley? No. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Councilmember Gaspin. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I have a resolution authorizing filing of declaratory judgment action relative to disbursement of retainage for 20th Avenue North Pumping Station and Force Main Replacement <coughs> Project B-2014. I move this be adopted as read. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions? 
Hearing none, could we have roll call, please? Councilmember McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Seely? Yes. Thank you. That concludes our motions, resolutions, and ordinances <coughs> for tonight. And we'll move to unfinished business, of which we have one item. And the first is item number one. And Councilmember Connell, I'm assuming you want to abstain? That's correct. So would someone else like to present mm -hmm. item number one for approval? Mm -hmm. And I'll jump in at once. I'll, I'll, I'll move. <laughs> <laughs> Second. So, someone, did someone, who made the motion? Yeah. <coughs> Councilman Seeley. I, I, I'll move it be approved. Pat, Pat, do we have someone down for a, a motion in a second? I do not. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, I was hearing two directions there. So, okay, we, ha we have a, a motion and a second to approve item number one. So could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Abstain. Thank you. That concludes our unfinished business for tonight. Councilmember Detterman. Thank you, Your Honor. I move we adjourn to 7 p.m. December 13th, 2016. Second. We have a motion and a second. Could we have roll call, please? Councilmember Connell? Yes. Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Mm -hmm. Yes. Datterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Thank you. We are adjourned and we'll move immediately into our Clinton City Council Committee of the Whole for November 22nd. And whenever Pat is ready, we'll have roll call. <coughs> Councilmember Gassman? Here. Seeley? Here. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Here. O'Neill? Here. Connell? Here. Thank you. Our first item tonight is the cast request to replace a new sign on Riverfront. And it's got Pat O'Connell or Dick. Who wants to address that? Pat or? I, I can certainly talk about it. Um, I don't think too much needs to be said. All I will recommend the council do tonight is uh, consider the advice provided uh, in confidential memorandum uh, from Steve Leidinger, my colleague, and I think you move it forward to a public hearing for the reasons stated in that memo, just to make sure there aren't any concerns on the part of the public before you proceed uh, to place the, the sign. You know, as, as you know, we're recommending we go ahead and, and allow that, but I think you just hold a public hearing and make sure there's no member of the public that would object to it. I can't imagine there would be, but I uh, just out of an abundance of caution, I think you do that. Okay. Does anyone have any questions, <coughs> Pat? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move the resolution forward. To the public, <coughs> oh, we need to to public, to set the, the public seven, hearing. Yeah. Okay. The 13th. If there's no uh, other how, discussion, yeah, there is. Okay. How <coughs> how long is a public hearing going to take to get set up, and how long is it going to? We get delay? approved at the 13th too. 13th. Uh, yeah, I, I just think you set up you set a public hearing for the next uh, council. the next council meeting, and I think the the resolution could follow that on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there's a representative from CAST here. Is that going to mess up your Plans on ear. No, I, in my uh, no, I, I was. Is very much in favor of this. I was, not be an obstacle. Okay. No, I, I, I was uh, talking to the representative no, of CAS. We, we have a judge standing in front of us. <laughs> Reti no, no, no. <laughs> retired. A retired <laughs> judge. I think that still trumps a, 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 an active attorney. <laughs> uh, no, it does not. No? <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you more power than you realize. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Dave Sivright, 3720 Valley Oaks Drive. Celebrate Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, Happy birthday. That's fine. Th thank you. <laughs> that's, that's fine. No, we're, well, the, the delay is not a problem. Okay. Uh, and I, I think the public hearing is a good idea. But I would like to ask uh, the city attorney, the last time we were talking about this, we were, one of the things we wanted to check is see if this is approved and we go down to get the permit, if they say, oh, you, this is, you've got to get a zoning variance, we were, we were wondering about that. This is a city sign on city property. It re it's only replacing the top of an existing sign that was placed there for the Riverboat Casino in 1991. Presumably a variance was granted then because zoning hasn't changed for the park. I was wondering, you know, that's going to come up. City staff is probably going to raise that issue when we go for the, the permit. Uh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, Your Honor. Yeah, but, no, I'm, I'm, um, the, <laughs> the city staff will be briefed on, on the same analysis that I provided uh, to the city council and 
I think probably you and I should talk on the phone and I can explain to you kind of where we're coming from and I think it'll make a lot of sense once we do that. Okay, that sounds fine to me. The, the public hearing is a good idea. To say what Steve Leidinger and I concluded is slightly different than what you and I talked about and I think it works just fine. I'll look forward to visiting with you then. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you, Your Honor. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Pat. And I hear, I hear no other discussion, so could we have roll call, please? Council Member Gassman? Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Thank you. Our next item is the Elliott Mediation <laughs> Settlement Offer. Well, I'll give you a summary of what transpired. On November 10th, myself and Pat met with the representative of Elliott Equipment and a mediator, Peter Gardelos of Waterloo, and the attorneys for Elliott. Uh, we had a discussion that went over three hours as far as trying to work out some um, amicable agreement. And basically, we have an offer from Elliott, and this is not an offer that's open for negotiation. This is their only offer. So, and here's what it consists of. They are willing to pay us a lump sum payment of $30,000 in cash which represents $20,000 uh, toward the equipment that we purchased from and $10,000 as a credit toward the, the carts that we have on order, which then equals $30,000. And then they are also, I find, they have provided, uh, they are also claiming that they have provided the following to the city of Clinton to assist the city as a gesture of goodwill and good business practice for a longtime customer and what they have provided with is the city with garbage truck for a total of 22 weeks seven weeks were free because the city truck had, was late for delivery an additional 15 weeks of free rent was provided at fifteen hundred dollars a week for a total of twenty two thousand dollars in benefits to the city and additionally elliot discounted the truck bought by the city for fifteen thousand dollars for a total of thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars in benefits to a good customer. So there's 375 in goodwill and benefits and the $30,000 in cash. So the, the, the overall is 67,500. And so really that, that, that is what the offer that we were able to mediate it, and it's really a, whether the council wishes to move forward with a resolution to accept that or your <coughs> other option is we've already given the city attorney the direction in closed section to what our next course of action would be you, you have your two, two choices. So that's really, the, that's our discussion topic. Councilmember O'Neill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you were saying 30,000 in cash, was, I thought part of it was a credit towards the garbage Well, cans. that's the same as cash oh. because we're not gonna pay it okay. out to them. Well, I guess when I, when I read this, it, it was fine until when I, when I was reading these $22,000 that they um, gave off uh, for <coughs> late deliver delivery, Again, you know the the contract called for a delivery date, and you know I, I guess uh, part of my thought process is that the manufacturer is probably reimbursing for the delivery being late. Who, who put it together? And the fifteen thousand dollars, all these were were given that they would give to any good customer. So it's not anything out of the ordinary. It, if if Joe Blow is a good customer, they would have given it. To them, if we didn't have this pro, if we didn't have this situation, we would have gotten that thirty-seven five, no matter what, because we're a good customer. So we never raised the issue uh, of, of past billing or anything else um, uh, that we've lost and 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 did not collect on because we did not have the equipment. And so the the raw the raw amount right now is forty thousand dollars and the thirty thousand dollars settlement. Um, to me, just you know, is that was taxpayers' money that went out of here, and we we paid for something we didn't get. And uh, again, I, I think we need to be made whole on it. And I, I, the the magical numbers of stuff that we would have gotten anyway because we're a good customer, whether or not there was a uh, a, a, con a, a, a difference of what what we we're asking for as far as uh, retribution for a contract that wasn't fulfilled uh, doesn't seem like uh, a real good deal to me. It's uh, again, it, 
the thirty thousand dollars off and the thirty seven thousand five is something we the thirty seven thousand five hundred we would have gotten anyway so and, well uh, as I said a lot of things that you mentioned uh, we did have that as discussion as part of the mediation and this was the final offer that they would made it was a take it or leave it offer oh well, that's that's fine and so like I said you know I, and I'm not disagreeing with you and the points that you brought up I did bring up and Pat also we had uh, that's why it went on for over three hours as far as our discussion with them so I, council member Kyle uh, maybe Creighton can answer this or maybe Anita I'm not sure but um, this vendor I'm assuming we're still using um, as a vendor we have existing vehicles are they a qualified vendor are they are a class a class b class c vendor um, do we plan on ordering more of their vehicles or are we switching to a different style of truck in the future what's a little bit of information maybe on that how our relationship is with them currently um, we do have a lot of their equipment and we do purchase from them regularly. Our street sweepers are from Elliott. Our garbage trucks are from Elliott. Um, I, I don't think we've had any discussion on, uh, you know, of, of looking at going to a different vendor or not. That hasn't come up. A lot of it has to do with the, what we decide to do with the um, recycling program. I and mean, there's a lot of issues that we haven't had a chance. I know Councilman O'Neill has been working on this but I don't think anybody sat down and really had a discussion on where we're going to go with the equipment purchases. But, um, but we do have quite a bit of their equipment, and we do uh, buy a lot of product from them uh, regularly. So at this they, point, doesn't they look, do it doesn't. So it sounds like it doesn't look like we're looking to disbar a vendor because no, of any we situation. We've got a lot of their equipment right now out there. So we buy our carts from them still um, regularly. Um, they're, they're, they respond. I mean, you order your stuff. They delivered on time and, and stuff like that but uh, we do have quite a bit of their equipment are we not, I don't have a real far background with them but are we purchasing in the next fiscal I, I can't remember there's a any street or garbage pick pickups do you recall Anita no not this yeah. not okay no. uh, they did acknowledge that the city of Clinton's been a long time customer right. and that's the that's the proposal they based it upon as I read it to you I guess I would just recommend maybe even going forward to Councilman O'Neill's, you know, if, if they're missing deadlines and that's been a habitual, then you need to look at, you know, remediation for that or um, having that contingency if they miss the deadline dates and there's a I, liquidated I have, damage going forward. But that's, I, I that's haven't been irrelevant aware of right now. Issues. The only issue that I've ever been aware of is the issues with these trucks. And, the, and it's actually the equipment that was added to the trucks as opposed to to the actual to the actual truck. <coughs> we and we do uh, occasionally have some breakdowns I mean quite often we run them down Davenport and uh, all repair work is under the warranty uh, they do take care of that um, you know that every time we've had an issue with them on okay. the trucks that we just bought so let, let me are they the only vendor that supplies this the trucks I wasn't involved in it. Ed no, I mean, is, are there other vendors? Is that oh, I'm question? sure there are. Okay. I'm sure there are. That they were the low bid on the pro on this yeah. on this that? Okay. on this project. Well, so there's that. Well, <laughs> well, the, but th we're dealing with the current issue as opposed to what went on because at the time they were the low bid. Uh, is there any other questions or discussion? So I guess really the, the, the question is whether the council wishes to forward on a resolution to accept this or does the council wish to reject it? I think that's what we, we have to make a decision. I make a motion to forward it, to accept it. Second. Okay, okay we have a motion to forward to accept it. And now we'll have any other questions or discussion. Is there anything else? Any other, no, no others? Okay. So a yes vote will accept this settlement and we'll move on a resolution to the next council meeting. <coughs> no vote will mean uh, we will reject. So, Pat, if we could have roll call, please. Council member, member Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? No. O'Neill? No. Connell? Yes. Gassman? Okay, so, yes. So that does pass four to two. Thank you. We'll move on to item number three, the sidewalk <laughs> replacement of Buell and Cleveland. Dick, I'll, I'll turn this over to you. Your Honor, City Council, I have to confess to being somewhat embarrassed that my first formal presentation to the City Council 
starts out with me saying, I would like to withdraw this from council consideration. <laughs> um, this came to me because of, a, because of a situation with a property owner in, in the Lyons District. And I went up there and met with him, and I also met with Jason, and we realized we had a significant problem. And at the first blush, Jason and I realized we did not have a reasonable alternative to deal with this, which prompted the memo that you got asking for a council uh, direction on it. Jason and I have talked since then, and we've also had some con, uh, con I'm sorry, some contact with the, with the contractor on this position. And Jason believes that we can work out an amicable set, uh, settlement on this, on this problem without having your direction involved in it, which I believe would have been a difficult situation for you to be in anyway, no. and I apologize <laughs> for that. I also want to tell you that I recognize we have a procedural problem uh, with our inspections because this job was not inspected as a final and therefore this this slope problem got missed and this is a, an issue that Jason and I will be dealing with so I promise you that will be addressed okay. thank you. perfect we'll withdraw that for today's discussion thank you very much this is the easiest one on the agenda yeah <laughs> The last one is the easiest. He must one. have somewhere to be. No. <laughs> yeah, he wants to get down there. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we will move on to item number four large item curbside pickup. Councilmember McGraw. Well, we've I've heard talk about this before, and recently <clears throat> we've been talking about the abandoned houses, doing something about them. We've been talking about doing something about sidewalks. And I think there's also a problem of cleaning up Clinton to take care of large item pickup. So I wanted it brought to the council again. Agreed. I would agree. Yeah, <laughs> I agree too. How much does it cost to do the large item pickup once a year, twice a year? Um, do you want to address that, Anita? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. So. When we did the large item pickup in the fall of 2014, we contracted it out to Detterman Industries, and the cost to us was 36,000 and some odd dollars. I don't have the exact number. 958. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sent that in a memo to city administrator. Um, and then in 2013 and 2012, we don't have good records in our system where we, you know, encapsulated a total and recognized it, but. In 2011, it was 33,000 and some odd dollars, and we used our own staff for that. Uh, the problem that um, I think we faced more so than the money in the solid waste fund is the personnel to do it. So um, I think if Creighton were standing here, he would probably say that we would need to look at contracting it out again. The, the issue that happened back when we did it ourselves is we have such a limited staff that the, the solid waste large item pickup went on for weeks and weeks because yeah. it took so long to cover cover yeah. the town Month. that we just mm -hmm. don't have the manpower to go out and attack you know as, as the routes are done we can't get that much done in a in a day's time right. so yeah it went on I think I went I would say it went on a month and we were we had garbage all over town right. and it looked awful yeah it looked wow. terrible yeah. and that and that created some of the negative <laughs> comments about doing the whole process so and have we really wound up with a bad situation over the last two years that we haven't done it? I think people have found ways to get things to the solid waste, and I, I would, with the present concern for <laughs> the solid waste, I would really not like to throw another wrench into. into this. You mean the paddle peel? Huh? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 and one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we did it is because there are several businesses that will pick up refrigerators and washers and dryers and, and large items. We don't even take that in our large Yeah, we don't take Yeah, well, I mean, so those things get picked up. The, the rest of it, I, I think we're opening a Pandora's box to go back there. And, and I understand your concern, 
uh, about it, but the I've seen oh, sure you know the big dumpsters sitting out in front of places that they get filled up, and that industry takes care of it. And whether it goes to our dump or Morrison or wherever, it doesn't really make any difference. But I'd, I'd hate to go back and start uh, the large item pickup again. Well, Does anybody know how long it took Detterman to complete when we contracted it out? Well, there was an issue with the way we did it with Detterman. We told them they had X number of dollars, and it stopped whenever they ran out of money. <laughs> yeah. oh. So it really... And I don't think we actually finished it, we, they, the, it the amount of dollars was spent, worse. and that was the they stopped. So mm -hmm. it wasn't the best it way of work, but we, had, we were limited on the amount of dollars. The biggest problem that's occurred is that people go and throw everything, just they just scoop up everything here and throw it out in front of their house. Mm -hmm. Well, all that fits in their toter, and we don't pick up things that fit in the toter. It's, this is, needs to be yeah. large items, not just the garbage that they've gotten out of their closet and dumped on the ground. So B&S became overburdened with actually having to go out and tangle all this and have it cleaned up because they were trying just to unload their their household belongings yeah. you know so unfortunately what we think is a good idea and doesn't always work and a thought that just came to mind and I don't know if this would work or not is if we did several weekends where we just had a, lo a dump location where you could bring your large item to be disposed of yeah you know, because then you know it's a large item that you can dispose of it as opposed to just shoeboxes of stuff thrown out in the ground. Your Honor, uh, if it's okay with the council, I would like to take that and perhaps some other suggestions back to staff and see what we can bring back to you for an alternative for this. That would be Very wonderful. Perfect. And I see okay. Creighton has a thought too. We, <laughs> we love thoughts. <laughs> and what do Here. other cities do? Yeah. 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 Right. Here in council, last time we, uh, last time they did when Derriman was contracted, I was in the billing department then. <clears throat> we actually sent people ahead of them to tag items that were not, uh, that we wouldn't pick up TVs and so forth and notify. So we had city staff then now looking back and talking to the staff that was here. The shortest period of time they remember is four weeks to complete the whole. The averaged about six and the worst was eight. And the worst time uh, from looking back and talking to the employees, it involved all the departments. Um, it, it was so heavy. Um, <clears throat> the staff issue is huge. Um, 2000, I think 11, they, the street yeah, side the still had, um, I oh, believe they had like 15 or 16 employees on that side. And we're down to six. Now this year, and, and back then they were not doing the roll mowing around that was all done by the parks. Well, this year we have we have gotten that back, and it's in pretty rough shape. And it's going to take us a considerable amount of time to get it caught up. And we also have acquired Liberty Square, uh, which we all know how that we got that I think in July when we really first got started on it. So staffing issues is huge. There's days I have one person, uh, average three people, four people, and believe me, they are doing everything they can do. Um, I'm amazed at the stuff they get done that I ask them to do, and I um, unless the staffing issue is uh, you know addressed down the road, I don't see how they can take on any more than what they're doing right now. So I'm just well, like I said, even when we had a contractor, we burdened BNS with trying to go out. Yep, and, is it, it just shifts it to somebody yeah, else. It, it, <laughs> I know it became a mess as far as people just <laughs> do not follow the rules, and well, there are people we, we that actually do. had TVs that that. Our nuisance people would tag, and you'd find them in another section of town. Same TV because they'd mark it, <laughs> and they'd just pick it up and move it. It's like this what, one here. All, huh? <laughs> they had to pay yeah. for it. To do well, that. <laughs> we were we were all picking up today because we we go today. We went out. I went out with uh, one of our other drivers. You know, we saw bags out in the road, and we went to one place that was a complaint. We never even made it there. We started on the bypass. By the time we even got to Second Avenue, we picked up six TVs. Uh, 15 20 bags of leaves and garbage and so I'm gonna have to send them back another time to the original complaint because we never made it that far so yeah it's it's I don't know what to do with it we, we pick up tires all the time out it's all mostly out in the uh, rural area of town you know on the on the gravel that's where mm -hmm. most of the Landfills. issue is mm -hmm. tires is another issue we have uh, I picked <coughs> up 32 of myself one day in the pickup truck they were constant we pick them up so there is a problem. I don't know what the real answer to it is, but I do remember all those years we did the pickup. It looks like a war zone for months. Mm -hmm. So, 
Now that's really my thought. If we make them everybody bring it to one spot or two or three spots, then it's not piled up in front of everybody's house. I'd say let's let the yeah. can staff uh, mm -hmm. come yeah. back with okay. an idea. Give us Thank some suggestions. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Chief Brown, we got some sur surplus property to declare. Good evening once again. Um, some of you might recall this conversation back when we were in the process of purchasing our truck. Uh, just as an aside, the uh, battalion chief Atkinson and I just rolled back into town about six o'clock today. We we went up to Appleton, Wisconsin, and did a final inspection on the new truck that'll be coming. So it is time to get rid of these old ones. Um, we were short about I think twenty three thousand dollars. Uh, when we when we got the bids for the truck, uh, we were able to realize some savings by paying ahead, which was a good deal. Uh, but it's time to get rid of these. Uh, Dennis Hart and I have talked quite a bit. We've been watching like Gov deals and eBay, and the market for these trucks is just it's just really not there. But we do have local interest, uh, two different local fire departments that would like to bid on them. Uh, so the thought was just to put them out to bid i ran it by the city attorney as well and and uh, just accept sealed bids on each vehicle of the, the two fire trucks the third vehicle that uh, we're asking to put on the surplus list is the 2003 ford crown victoria that was uh, pretty much worn out squad car when we got it uh, but we used it as a training car for a number of years uh, i've driven it to des moines and back and quite honestly uh, nobody should be in it there's there's something going on in the rear end some thunking noise but uh even worse just recently i picked it up at the marina uh, and drove it back to the fire station with the steering wheels like this uh it, it's just time for is that the to, one with the red stripe yeah yeah it's, it's it's unsafe and it's just time for it to, to go by the wayside i think uh jason Kraft would like to bid on it as a demo car <laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyway, so we're just asking to put those on the uh, on the uh, on the surplus list, and so that we can move forward with the, the bid process on the trucks. I see Captain Cop smiling over there, and I, I think they did that just as a friendly joke from the PD to you guys, because he's sitting over there just just grinning. I don't know. Uh, retired uh, uh, Captain Clay drove it all summer as, a, as the summer uh, nuisance guy. But he, and I spoke to him, when I saw him in the parking lot with it, he said it reminded him of one of the first cars he drove when yeah. he got assigned to patrol. He got the oldest car in the fleet to drive. Yeah. He said it, rem it reminded him of that. I think he liked it. I saw the window down and he looked pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was used to the wheel that going yeah. straight. Yeah. So anyway, we'd like your blessing to move those. And then uh, I, I've included at the bottom of the third paragraph of my memo um, what to do for a training car. We've Again, we've used... This old Crown Vic, it, it's it's okay, but we do have people that go to Ames quite a bit uh, for fire service training bureau training. Uh, reluctant to let them use their own vehicles because then you're paying them 39 cents a mile, and that adds up pretty quick. So uh, right now we've been, I just I just leave my car for them to take, but but we really need some sort of vehicle, whether it just be a used SUV or something to fill that void. Um, we've had pretty good luck with with uh, the used one we, that I drive. Actually, we drove that to, to uh, Appleton and back just this last two days, so. Well, do we have a, a motion to uh, forward on a resolution to declare surplus vehicles? So I'll make move. the motion. Second. Okay. Any other discussion <laughs> or questions of the chief? Thanks. Thank you, chief. Yep. Could we have roll call then, please? Council Member Gassman. Yes. Seeley? Yes. McGraw? Yes. Detterman? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Connell? Yes. Thank you. The Clinton Regional Development Corporation Annual Meeting, Councilmember Detterman. Uh, I just wanted everyone to be aware of it, and uh, I think it's a, a great event that we should all attend, and uh, I have a great speaker uh, talking about uh, site selection and economic development, and I would just hope everyone could make it to uh, see it. And, got the date and maybe we could all just uh, maybe Pat could uh, make a reservation for any of us that want to you, you actually will be having invitations coming to you oh we will yeah they're, they're coming <laughs> out okay yeah, yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gotten one? I haven't got one. Oh. <laughs> no, the, the, no, the entire city council will be receiving an invitation. Okay. This was kind of to save the date to make sure you got it on your calendar. There's so many other things going on in okay. December that they want to make sure you uh, save the, that, that time slot. So now we move on to probably the easiest item on the agenda, item number seven, the mayor council update. So I'll look to my left. I see Council Member O'Neill has his hand up. Well, no, I, I had just one thing I wanted to, I guess, clarify. Back on the sidewalk replacement, is this, that's coming back to the Committee of the Whole for us to? I hope not. No. Hopefully it'll be cleaned <laughs> up. It'll we'll be taken care of. I'm sorry. I hope we're going to get this problem resolved without, without having to involve the council. Okay. <laughs> if it comes back to you, then I will have failed in that effort. No. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Right. Did you have something under mayor and council updates? Yes, I'll okay. have. Uh, there will be no Thursday um, radio program for obvious reasons. Why not? Well, <laughs> tune in and they'll, they'll let you know. Um, but I do have the uh, public forum at the Erickson Center on December third, the first Saturday of the month. That'll be uh, all the topics we talked about here, or anything else that anyone wants to bring and talk about. Nine thirty to eleven. Thank you. Anyone else? City Administrator. <clears throat> First of all, let's see, when did I come here? November 8th. I have to tell you, so far I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, working here. Hmm. Uh, the staff has been great, the City Council has been great, and the Mayor of an, and I have spent a lot of time together working out strategy and, uh, you know, administrative details. So it's been a great experience for me, but I have to move you on to the next phase of this, and that I, I, it's just not showing up here, but you have a council, a committee of the whole meeting on December 6th. And that was the date that was su uh, submitted in the Br Brimeyer proposal as the progress report. And that's the time when, and my boss, Richard Fersman, will actually come and do this. And he will present to you, I don't know how many candidates, but it will come to you in something like this. This is what we did for Nevada. It, it comes as a report on on the 11 or 12 or however many candidates he feels he needs to bring forward for you to look at. And you go through this, you'll have it in, in advance of the meeting. You'll be able to look at this and each, each one has a resume and, and information that we will supply for you that you can compare them by just flipping through this. He will be here to help you decide who it is you wanna bring in on December 16th and 17th, I think those are the two dates, for interviews. And I've, I've been working with the mayor so far on how that's all going to happen. But uh, when, when you do actually have the interviews, then you're gonna get another book. And this will be a book which will have information on each of the five or six candidates that you wanna bring in, including the kinds of questions you wanna ask them and further uh, <coughs> tests like their personality profile information, uh, reference reports, credential, background, that sort of thing. We do all of that. Um, <clears throat> I, these are from a previous job. I just brought these to show you the kind of information you get. And um, in addition to the, the two days of interviews that the, uh, the candidates come in for, we also invite them to bring their spouses because this is usually or should be a team effort. We want both of them to be involved in the decision. We also like to have other people involved in this, including interview panels made up of the department heads and a group of community leaders who either you or the mayor will select to come in and, and conduct an interview panel themselves. These other two groups will then report back to you as the city council on their observations of the candidates. They will not make a recommendation to you as to who you should hire or rank them, but they will give you a different point of view as to what the strengths and weaknesses of these candidates are other than you might see. Sometimes staff gets a different take on a candidate or the candidate presents themselves differently than they would to the city council. So we, we try to get a full background on this. Uh, on the Thursday, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the Friday that the candidates come in, we would give them a tour of the city conducted by either you folks or the, the staff, usually the staff because it's a facilities tour and then in the afternoon, we have one-on-one -on -one interviews, a council member and a candidate, where you just sit down and converse with them. It's not highly structured, but you get a chance to know them as an individual. 
we follow that with a recommended reception, a public reception where the public can come in and meet the candidates, and you as a council can observe how these candidates operate in a social environment. We also ask the public who come to meet them to fill out comment cards, which we also share with you at the end of this. There's also an opportunity, if you choose to do this, to have a dinner with the candidates and their spouses that evening. To, um, again, this is also to observe them in a social environment. So we really try to give you a, a broad spectrum of what these candidates are like in the process. Any questions? Yeah. I yes, would sir. not recommend a yeah. whole lot of discussion because I don't, unless, okay. Dick, with the, unless the agenda was amended it wasn't. to include this agenda item, I would recommend you just leave it oh, to that's, your remarks. That's right. I was supposed to just report on this. Later committee of the whole if anybody yeah. has questions. Yeah. Or yeah. if any of the councilmen have questions to contact mm -hmm. me. Yeah, because, yeah, we can't really have a discussion. That's right. Because I don't want to, I don't want to be going down the road of the council discussing something that they didn't uh, have on the agenda. Sorry, sorry, Pat, I forgot that. That's okay. I think it's fine that you made the comments and it's informative for everybody and I just, but I don't, I just don't want the council to be doing a thing. Okay. Okay. You can turn back on law and order now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything? I, I just have two things. One, uh, the PAB appeal with ADM is uh, November 29th to uh, December 1st. And I will be attending this. Pat and I have already had some discussion about some of the things that are going to be presented. Uh, Pat, I did send you an email asking you to find out the actual maximum date that they can go <laughs> as far as getting a decision. I know you talked about 60 days, but I wanted to find out what the, the law says was the maximum date. Uh, and then I, I did find it was very disturbing that the banks are not going to be open on Thursday. There's no radio show on Thursday. Uh, mm -hmm. But the business is all opening at five and six o'clock for Black, <laughs> Black Thursday. That's good. They so, collect sales tax. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That sales tax. That's good. So, but basically, what I want to do is wish everyone a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. And if so, you have nowhere to go, you can come to my house. Oh. <laughs> very good. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. I move we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thanks for. I know, I know, it is. 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 It